check this thing out. Newport Bluetooth on wall speaker by OC Acoustics. OC Acoustic. Drop this little thing down. Plug it into a wall. That's just a neat little Bluetooth speaker. And that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. I got this from a friend who is also a viewer, Jason, who happens to run the Intellectual People podcast. So if you guys are interested in watching a podcast and hearing some people who are wicked smart talk about how they got to where they are, check that out. I'll throw up a link in the card. But yeah, in the meantime, Jason asked if I would be willing to test this out because he was curious about it. It's what people would call a, ooh, that was close, a lifestyle speaker. Uh, I just call it a convenient speaker. So it's a Bluetooth speaker that you literally just plug into the wall and fire it up. You can connect it to your iPhone, or I've even actually connected it to my Mac at one point playing around with it. I've not had any issues out of it with connection, so I have left it plugged in for a couple days at a time. I've disconnected it, reconnected it without issue. I've left the house, come back, had it reconnect without issue on my iPhone, at least. Played music just fine. Uh, as far as fidelity goes, they don't market this thing to be a high fidelity speaker. So that's not really how I'm going to review it. I'm going to review it as just a convenient Bluetooth speaker. And I got to say, this might be my favorite little gadget that I've reviewed so far. And I, I don't want to, you know, oversell it or anything like that because... <clears throat> it, it, frankly, it is what it is. It's just a two inch driver, plays full range. There's not a lot of bass, but it's a little bit more maybe than you would expect. It was a little bit more at least than what I had expected going into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, I fired it up. I plugged it in the wall, fired it up and, and just walked around the house, listened to it, use it while I was doing dishes and things of that nature. Uh, I did put it on the clipple. I used the baffle method. So I took the time to actually cut out a baffle and then cut out an extension cord plug. I'll throw a picture up here. You can see what I'm talking about and then connect this little guy into the extension cord plug. So it, it actually sat flush on a wall while I was measuring it. And while the data on axis doesn't indicate great performance and even off axis doesn't indicate great linearity, I think overall what you're, what you're getting really is just, again, a convenient type Bluetooth speaker that doesn't clutter up your desk gets decently loud. I mean, we're not talking deafening SPL levels here, and nobody would really expect that from a speaker this size, but it just does a good job of staying out of the way, connecting fine, and providing you with good atmosphere music if you just want to use it for leisure. And that's exactly what I like listening to little Bluetooth speakers like this for. Uh, Alexa, Echo Dot, uh, the Google Play, those kind of things are all just convenient type speakers to have around. And if you want to stream some music through this in your kitchen or your bedroom or even your garage, at one point I had it in the garage, just playing music while I was setting some stuff up for another test. It does all those things just fine. Retail is 80 bucks as of today. I could have swore I saw it at 70 bucks a couple days ago, but it's 80 bucks. Now, again, I did not pay for this one. It was sent to me on loan, but... I will probably actually buy one. It does come in a few different colors. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring up their website and we're going to flip through a couple of the different options that they have. And right here is the white, which I like the white. I think I like the white more. And then if we go back to their main page, let's see here. Look at the different colors. So they got black with orange, uh, this black with the... It's supposed to be blue, or it sure looks blue in this image, at least on the grill, but it is black, as you can see. This is what I'm holding. Champagne white that they call, and then a gray white. Again, this, this gray on the grill from the side angle looks blue, but it is actually a gray. Now, like I said, I did measure this speaker, so let me pull up the measurement results from my other computer. We're gonna start first with the spinorama data. Now, remember, this is just the front hemisphere, so the front portion of the speaker was measured. The back, it doesn't matter because it's going to be connected to an outlet. It's going to be on a wall. So what you're seeing is just a culmination of those front hemisphere measurements. And the black represents the on-axis response. You can see there's about a 6 dB to 7 dB delta between the high frequency and the low frequency. Now, I believe this is just simply baffle step. Having this speaker positioned off the wall about this much, you can expect that there's going to be some reduction in bass. So that's really what you're getting. It's a baffle step effect. And then there is a deep notch from the distance of the 
speaker to the wall as well. So there's a cancellation and these things are kind of to be expected. But to me, what's really more important is it's not about the on axis sound. You're not going to be plugging this thing into a wall at your knee level or something like that. And then sitting in the floor, listening to it on axis. It's not a hi-fi speaker. To me, what's important is what does it do generally? The overall radiation pattern as you move around the room, what does it sound like? And for that, you would really want to look at something like the sound power. So if you look at the sound power, it's actually pretty darn good. There is a strong resonant mode or a strong resonant peak uh, at around maybe it's like 8K or so. Now, I don't know if that is from the drive unit itself. It could be. Uh, it could be some kind of diffraction effect. I don't I don't really know. And frankly, I don't really care. I'm not sitting there listening to this thing intently. It's background music and it's that's what it's for and it serves that purpose well. But another thing that Clipple does offer me is the ability to look at acoustic zones. So this is what that data is. And then the red line is the front. So this is like if you're just sitting right in front of the speaker, which that's a, basically the on axis response. So I'm gonna drop kick that for the time being. Now we're gonna look at the other zones, front left, front right, front upper and front lower. And this kind of gives you a general idea of what the sound would be like at different locations uh, facing the speaker. So you can be up front and to the side of it, basically it's quadrants, if you will. And we can see overall that the response is, is decent. It's not great, but it's, it's decent. And I would say that each of these really do a good job of representing what I had heard as I moved about the speaker in my listening environment. Now, personally, I would have liked a little bit more bass out of the speaker. That would be nice, but it's a two inch speaker and it's 80 bucks, ready to go, shipped to your door. So I, I guess I gotta give it some slack there. And then if we go and look at the, we're gonna look at the distortion, okay? At 76 dB, this is what the distortion is. Uh, it's above 3% THD, below 200 Hertz. It's, it's not very good. I mean, this is 76 dB, that's not quite loud. At 86 dB, man, that distortion ramps up. And then at 96 dB, it is distortion city. So very high distortion at higher output volumes. Now, if we go and look at the magnitude, this is kind of giving us an idea of the maximum SPL. So 76 dB is marked at the black line and, and you can kind of ignore the, the legend on the left because this isn't scaled quite the same as it actually is an output. The microphone is a little bit closer, but it's set up to give you representative of 76 dB at one meter. Then 86 dB at one meter is in blue, and we can see there's about a two, maybe three dB difference between those two, which means that there is compression setting in or limiting built into the speaker to keep it from going too loud in volume and damaging the speaker. And then I wanted to get it to 96 dB, and there's about a seven dB delta between 76 dB and 96 dB. So this tells me that it didn't do the output that that it should have done at 96 dB, there's about 3 dB gain off of the theoretical, or I should say 7 dB off of the theoretical, which means that 96 minus seven is about 89 dB. So 89 dB at one meter anechoic is about the loudest this speaker is going to play. And I think that's reasonable. I've tested a few others like the Bose SoundLink, Revolve, and, and a couple other speakers, and the upper 80 dB region was where they kind of maxed out at. So Overall, all things considered, the output is adequate, I think, for most people. And if you find that it is not loud enough for you or you're concerned with it, that does actually have something called party mode where you can link up. I think I read that you can link up like, is it 50 of these things? Nobody's ever going to do that. But this is an inordinate, inordinate, inordinate amount of these that you can link together. And you got to keep them within, I think it's 45 feet from the main one, but you can just link up a ton of these things throughout your house and it will play, you know, as you walk around it. It's not set up to do stereo or anything like that. But again, we're talking about a speaker that is a convenient speaker that you plug up to the wall just to provide you with some music in your room. And hey, that's okay. So overall, my impression is definitely something that I enjoy, definitely something that I will buy. And I think it would be kind of a cool gift. It's a shame that Christmas is already over because I could see this as being something that you could give to friends or family and them really just enjoying it. And I, I truthfully do mean that. Now, I'm not a salesman. This kind of sounds like a sales pitch, but, you know, 
I'm just, just a speaker that I'm happy with. I will provide an Amazon affiliate link at the bottom of this if you want to link directly to that, but you can Google it yourself and or buy it directly from the manufacturer. That said, I uh, again, recommend it. think it's a really cool little speaker. Uh, thank Jason for loaning it to me to test, and I'm sad that I'm going to have to send it back to him, but I know he's kind of been waiting to get it. So I will talk to y'all later. Take care. Peace.